Okay, we're going to start these problems by making some rectangular representations similar to those that we saw in Lesson 1. We're going to make two uh, rectangles. Okay, and each one of these rectangles is one hole, so we can bracket the top and put one hole. Now we're going to represent each one of these fractions. Uh, the first one, the first addend, is one-fourth, so I'm going to use three vertical lines to partition this into uh, four equal parts, and the numerator is one, so I'm going to shade one of those four parts. For the next one, we're going to use horizontal lines, and you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to change colors here, just so that we have a little contrast. So, since it is thirds, we're going to use two horizontal lines to partition it into two equal parts. And we can shade one of those three. I'm going to label these as well. So this I'm going to label as one-fourth. And over here I'm going to label this as one-third. I'm going to rewrite the problem over here. So I have one-fourth plus one-third. Now, we're going to use uh, these lines to create equivalent fractions just like we did in the first one. So in for one-fourth I'm going to now draw two horizontal lines. Now we have our fraction is no longer divided into fourths but we have the same area shaded so we know it's equivalent. So I have one, two, three, four 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So my denominator for my new fraction here is twelfths. How many of the twelve are shaded? That would be three. So one-fourth becomes three-twelfths. Now we're going to do the same with the other uh, rectangle here, except we're now going to partition it into four equal parts using vertical lines. And again, I have 12 parts, so we will take that and put 12 as our denominator. And th 4 out of the 12 are shaded. So now we have like denominators. Now we have uh, like terms. We can add by adding the two numerators. 3 plus 4 is 7. And that's 7 twelfths. We use 12 still because e uh, each whole is still divided into 12 parts. Let's look at the next one. Make some more room at the bottom here. So we shall make our two rectangles. Again we'll bracket each as they represent one whole. Now I'm going to look at my first add-in. It's one-third. So I'm going to use a uh, two vertical lines and I'm going to shade in one part. We'll label that one-third. For the second one I'm going to uh, represent one-seventh using horizontal lines. Since my denominator is seven I need to make six horizontal lines. Alright, not too even but they don't have to be perfect. And a one of those is shaded in. And we'll bracket that. And we'll have one seventh. Now like we did with the previous problem, we're now going to put horizontal lines in the first uh, rectang uh, rectangular model. And we are going to put in six of those lines, partitioning it seven ways. Alright, now what do we have here? We have 3 times 7, uh, our denominator is 21. So we'll rewrite our fraction, 1 third plus 1 seventh equals uh, something over 21. We'll count our shaded portion, 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven. So one third becomes seven twenty firsts. Now we'll partition our second 
rectangle and this time we're going to use two vertical lines to partition it equally into three parts. And again we have 21 as our denominator. How many are shaded? 1, 2, 3 out of 21. So now we have 3 for our numerator and we add 7 plus 3 we get 10 21st. I didn't mention simplifying, uh, but we cannot simplify either of these fractions so far because uh, I don't have any common factors. The factors of 7 is 1 and 7, and 12 has factors of 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. The only factor they have in common is 1. The same applies to uh, uh, D. Let's do one more little set here. They're slightly different. Okay, if we look at these problems, we see that we now have non-unit fractions. Unit fractions have 1 in the numerator. Non-unit unit fractions have values greater than 1. So 3 fourths is not a unit fraction. 1 fifth is. 2 thirds is not a unit fraction, nor is 2 sevenths. Let's make our representations once again. Two, each bracketed on the top, labeled one. And we're going to now start with the first one. Uh, the denominator is four, so we're going to partition it into four equal parts using three vertical lines. This time we have three-fourths, uh, so we're going to shade three out of the four partitions. And we'll bracket that and put three-fourths. For one-fifth, we're going to partition it with horizontal lines, four horizontal lines, dividing it into five equal parts. We'll shade in 1 because the numerator is 1. We'll bracket that and put 1 fifth. Now we're going to find our common denominators and find our equivalent fractions. So uh, for the first uh, addend, we're going to now partition it into 5 equal parts, again with 4 vertical lines, or horizontal lines rather. And we'll, we'll see how many parts we have, and that determines our denominator. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 by 5. 4 by 5 is 20. So our denominator here is 20. How many are shaded out of the 20? Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 out of 20 are shaded. Let's take care of our second addend. Again, we're going to partition it, this time using three vertical lines, partitioning it into four equal parts. Now we know that our denominator, once again, is 20. And if we look at the number shaded, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 out of 20. We can now add our numerators, 15 plus 4 is 19, and uh, the denominator remains a 20. We can't simplify this one either. But to the last example, again we have two non-unit fractions. Two rectangles, or squares almost. And again bracket them as 1. And we're going to use our vertical lines, two vertical lines, partitioning the whole into three equal parts. We see that two parts are shaded because two is the numerator. Bracket our two thirds. Um, now we're going to use six horizontal lines to partition this second rectangle into seven equal parts.
and we see that 2 is our numerator, so we're going to shade 2 out of the 7 parts, and we will bracket that and put 2 sevenths. Okay, now to find the equivalent fractions, we're going to go to the first representation for the first add end, and partition it using horizontal lines, 6 of them, to make 7 equal parts. And we have 3 times 7 is 21, so our denominator will be 21. And we're going to just kind of work that up there. So we have 21 as our denominator, and we know it's going to be the same for the second add end as well. How many are shaded? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 are shaded. So we can now write 14. And, of course, we could use multiplication for this, too, couldn't we? We uh, would uh, multiply our 3 times 7 to get 21 and 2 times 7 to get 14. Right? That's, in essence, what we're doing here. And now we're going to go on and partition the second add end using two vertical lines, cutting it into three equal parts. And uh, we see that we have 6 shaded. Now that's the same as multiplying, well, 7 times 3 is 21. We have to multiply the numerator by 3 as well, and we get 6. And of course, if we counted those, we would see 6. And we'll add, and we get 20, 21st. Barely got the room to do that. Okay, uh, those are some examples. You have some word problems as well. The word problems are solved through the same process. They're pretty simple and straightforward, so you shouldn't have any problem with them.